Okay, I'm back. Left you off with drip edge, and now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get these shingles started for you. So a couple of things first before we really get into it. I've set this panel up for three tab shingles. These kind of shingles here. But I just wanted to briefly discuss dimensional shingles. These kind of shingles here. Just depending on which ones you're trying to lay, they both are going to lay similar. It's the starting process that becomes different. For instance, I've popped these straight up and down lines, six inches apart, and my three tab roof will end up something like this. Whereas, if I'm laying these shingles, they're going to end up something like this. As I'm laying them up. This is stair step. This is called racking. And in the instructions, it tells you not to rack these kinds of shingles. They want them. They want them stair step. So there we are. So one of the first things that I'm going to have to do is I'm going to put some roofing cement on the edge here, and that ties my my dry in or 30 pound underlayment, my tar paper, to my drip edge, and it seals this in between, and also holds my roof down. That's another job of the roofing cement. But before we do that and we make a mess with the roofing cement, I'm going to cut some starters. Some, some contractors and people, they like to turn the shingle upside down. I don't do it that way, and the book doesn't, uh, the instructions say to do it a little bit different. I want this seal strip on the edge. So I'm going to cut these tabs off. That way it holds down the edge of my roof. Similar with the dimensional shingles. In this particular brand, which is Tamco, the stickum or the glue strip is on the top. Some brands have the glue strip on the bottom. It's best to take the brand of shingle that you have and cut starters out of it. You can take a straight blade and cut right along this edge. Why don't I just do it for you? Now whenever you cut starters, make sure to save the top because you'll use you'll for the bottom. Make sure you save the bottom because you can use it for the top. Such as when you get ridge vent or you get to the top of a shed style roof like this. Now I'm going to change this out again because I'm done talking about laminated shingles, dimensional shingles, heavy weights, whatever you want to call it. So we talked about three tabs, which is what I've set up to lay here and what I'm going to lay. I'm going to Basically, there's a couple different ways to do it. You can lay them on your edge, nail them off, and then cut the tab, or you can cut the tab first. I like to cut the tab first. I only need three for this particular roof. Again, save these for the top. on the edge and that's equal to the top of your key here. Of course you can also cut these with a straight blade on the back. You can take a straight edge and set it across there and slice them. You can cut a stack of them. I only need three so I'm just going to go ahead and cut these off.
So again, I'm going to save these for the top. Now I have my starters. Okay. Next step, I'm going to make sure I'm all nailed off, and then I'm going to put some roofing cement on the edge. So once I put the roofing cement on the edge, I'll, I'll start laying the shingles because I want to set my starter in roofing cement. Yep, so here we are. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make sure my drip edge is nailed off. Around here we got to nail it off every six inches. I'm good. just want to get get a six inch width or so I don't want to get it on the front of the drip edge This is why we don't put the drip edge underneath the paper. bottom rows on. Notice I came, went up and brought it back. Because if you go down and bring it up, you're going to get roofing cement everywhere.
it is. Come around here. We put six nails in the shingles. Around here we put six nails in the shingles, but I still usually only put four in the starter. When you're nailing, I know I nailed this one opposite, but you nail over here first because this one, when it butts up to the shingle, actually helps hold it a little bit. So now I have it set. I'm just going to put a couple of nails in it. This T metal, I can ride the drip edge but it's nice and flush. Okay. So now I've set this up. See, I've got my keyways here, my, my lines. hardest part getting it started and I know that I'm only three feet from the ground but that's an anomaly because this is a mock-up need to cut that one, it's a full shingle, but I'm going to cut this next one. I'm just going to go ahead and lay the bottom and get it so I can turn around. Notice I'm nailing it right in the tab, or right in the right on the stick. That's so the nail goes into the starter, into the top of the starter. guys trying to go fast that's great when you're making money trying to lay shingles is great to go fast but when you're just doing it for yourself it doesn't really matter how fast you go what matters is that you get it done to where you don't have to go back very important and again around here we do not overhang the shingles. So I've got a line, a horizontal line, so I'm just going to put it right there in the corner, put my shingle right on the line. And I want to make sure this is the most important row here because I'm going to start this. And when you nail it, just make sure it's on the line, get it set, and nail it off. I'm nailing it, I'm nailing into the top, that's called the head lap, I'm nailing it right into the top of that other shingle. Thank you. 
Perfect. Okay, so now this one I don't have a line because I pop the line every other row. So I'm gonna lay the shingle right on top of the keyway there. But I wanna make sure it's right on over here. And top of my keyway, top of my keyway. There we are. That's the three rows, so I'm going to go ahead and finish these three rows out, then I can turn around. Right on the line. Back at it, but now I have enough room to stand. So now you can put the nails, you can lay them on the roof, you can put them in a big pouch. I just put them in the little pouch because that's the way I do it. I don't lay shingles all the time, and I usually don't lay them by hand, I usually have a, a gun. Now I'm going to lay, lay them racking, rack them, racking them up, and I'm not going to put a nail right here because as I come from the other side, I'm going to put a nail in there, so I'm just going to leave that nail out. So notice I put my foot here. I don't want that to move when I nail it. this several different ways. I could have racked up right here. I'm choosing to rack up the edge. That's just the way I'm doing it. Like I say, you can rack this up, then fill in the edge, and then fill in that edge. Notice I just discarded this. Don't discard it like this or that stick is going to stick. Make sure everything's sticking up like that with the stick them up. Very important. These are little, little things that will cause you much grief over the course of a job. So 
some locales you only have to put four nails in it. So that'd just be one, two, three, four. Around here we gotta put six. Ever since Hurricane Andrew. up and you hit a nail and you make a make a uh, hole in the shingle you can take a little bit of roofing cement and just put over it whoops that's how you get it on you right there just take some roofing cement put it over the nail if you need to don't need much, just seal the nail. Okay, now keep in mind as these shingles sit out in the is once it does get nice and hot, which it's going to. This is the slow way. Again, a gun would be faster, but it is 100%. Having a helper that can help you pop a line, cut, bring you shingles, bring you water. the edge over here make sure your nail is in this right in the roofing cement don't nail past the roofing cement very important This shingle is damaged. Don't throw it away. You can still use these two other tabs. Okay, we're getting to the top here. Okay, now the way I would finish this off, 
is I'm gonna go ahead and lay one more shingle and then I got my nails up here at the top, then I can put a piece of metal on and then I can just put shingles to cover that metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. I wanna go ahead and lay it because I've got my keyways and I want everything to be nice and straight. So now here I'm gonna nail underneath because my piece of metal is gonna cover it. But I'm going to nail it exactly like I did before. I'm just nailing it down further. And then I can cut the top off. And again, this is what you can use those tabs for that we cut off on the starters. Okay, I've got it racked up. I'm going to lunch. Okay, so now that we got through that, I'm basically gonna now put my shingles over here so that I can lay them. And now I can just fill the rest of this in. So I'm gonna lift this one out, butt it, put it on my line, and nail it. Now you know the rest of the story. this under here. And then nail that one. Somebody will find it. That's for sure. Okay, so after lunch, come out here and it is super hot. The shingles have been sitting for an hour. Now they're very hot, so they're going to scuff. So this is just an ordinary couch cushion. When uh, somebody puts their couch out for the garbage man to pick up, snatch the cushions, take the cover off and you're left with this foam cushion. It'll help you stay on the roof. Gives you something to kneel on so that you're not on the roof that's very hot. You can put your shingles on it, give you something so your shingles won't slide, or your tools won't slide, or your bucket won't slide. That's what I use. That's a trade secret right there. <laughs>